I'm going to be testing the FSR 3.1 update on Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, I'm at 4K, so I've got that set here. I will at first be doing 4K native, so upscaling's off and frame generation's off as well. And then I'll switch that on a bit later in the video, just so we kind of have a comparison between the two. Uh, graphic settings wise, I've got everything set to the max here. I'm going to have a little playthrough like this at 4K native. I am on my 4080 Super, so it's going to be interesting to see um, the decoupling, obviously, of frame generation of uh, FSR 3.1. So you're able to use DLSS upscaling with AMD frame generation. is obviously one of the core upgrades. As well as some, I think, image quality upgrades as well. I think they've targeted some of the shimmering and ghosting as well. I'm not sure we really see the ghosting issues in this game. I didn't really had those issues before. Probably going to be more noticeable in games with ray tracing. I know Cyberpunk, for example, it'd be definitely interesting to test that game with uh, some of those FSR improvements. But I don't think that has... I don't actually know when we're getting FSR 3 in that game. Feels like we've been waiting forever. I don't know any update on that. Hopefully we get it soon-ish. But at 4K native here... It's not quite holding 60 Harder. FPS, we've got a 59 average, but it's sitting at the moment somewhere. around about 55. But fairly stable at least, frame time looks pretty nice. But overall, it's, you know, reasonably okay-ish performance for 4K native. 12 gigs of VRAM, which is fine, obviously we've got 16 on this card. GP power's sitting under 300. So, holding above 60 on this bit, at least. I'm now going to take a look with DLSS upscaling and NVIDIA frame generation switched on. So, I've got the upscaling set to quality here, and I've got frame generation switched on here. Okay, so, with these settings, it's round about... We had 55 to 60 FPS at native, so it's almost doubled round about... Almost hitting 120-ish, almost double in that region at least. I'm gonna just take a look to see if we see any issues with the image or latency and stuff. Overall, from feeling it so far, I can't notice any latency. Image-wise, it looks fine. Can't really tell. There's no ghosting or anything like that so far. I'm noticing VRAM-wise, it has increased our VRAM. Obviously, switching NVIDIA frame generation on, as you'd expect. I would have thought maybe we see power come down a little bit on the GP by switching upscaling on, but it doesn't seem to have come down that much. Still sitting close to 300 watts. But I'll play around a little bit here just so we get a rough idea. So when we switch on AMD frame generation, we can have something to compare it to. But overall, seems pretty good. It's pretty, pretty nice. Obviously, it's doubling FPS. It'll be interesting to see if we get more FPS with AMD frame generation. But I'm definitely keen to have a look at this decoupling. So the fact you can use DLSS upscaling with AMD frame generation is pretty incredible. Especially for obviously older cards that... Well, any card that isn't a 40 series NVIDIA card where you can't use obviously their frame generation. That's a huge improvement to people with, if you have one of those cards. Kind of reset my, my uh, stats as well just so we can see this 0.1% low. It's normally pretty good. I mean, my frame time looks pretty good. 0.1% low at the moment, 83.73. Little bit micro stats here and there you can slightly see. But overall, it's not too bad. Don't feel anything, at least in the game. So this will be the big test. I'm able to obviously decouple FSL3 frame generation here. So I can use DLSS upscaling. So I've got that set to quality. And then I've got FSL3 frame generation set on here. First thing I'm noticing here with AMD frame generation on is look how much higher our FPS is. We had about 115 to 120 with NVIDIA frame generation. We've got closer to 130 here. Getting it dipped down a little bit when going through the forest here, 120 again. But when we're out of the forest area, I've seen 130, 135. So you're looking at maybe on average like a 10 to 15 FPS increase with the AMD frame generation compared to NVIDIA, which is obviously pretty incredible. Sitting closer to that 144 overall on our average. See it there, back up to 130. 
I've seen VRAM come down a little bit, obviously, as as we kind of expected with the AMD frame generation compared to NVIDIA. Obviously, the big benefit of this, I know a lot of people don't aren't really too keen on using FSR upscaling over DLSS, so with the decoupling in FSR 3.1, you can now use DLSS upscaling with AMD frame generation, so gives you that choice at least, especially if you don't own a 40 series card. That is like a huge uplift in performance. Just now need it to come out in a lot of games. In like a good kind of, you know, not doesn't hopefully take too long. I know we've got it in, it's come out in a few games recently. Is it Ratchet and Clank, this game, Horizon Forbidden West, I think. I think there's a couple of others. I know actually, I think God of War, the new God of War Ragnarok, that's due to come out on PC. I think that's going to have it. So I think the frame time to me looks a little bit better. Doesn't look like we get so many micro stutters. Well, they don't look quite as bad. I know we had an issue with um, FSR frame generation before in games where the frame time looked insane. I know we saw that in Avatar. And we also saw it in uh, that other game that had it. Frame generation. I can't think of the name of the game. It was that Unreal Engine 5 game. Can't for the life of me remember. How do I kill this guy? Like that. That is how we do it. Ooh. So VRAM now's crapped up a little bit. It's just over 10 and a half. Still less than what we had with NVIDIA frame generation though. Normally see it increase by about a gig with that on. Power, GP power as well. So maybe down slightly, 280. I think we saw closer to 300 when I was playing before. That is a big guy. Here you. Can I assassinate that guy? Can I? How do I crouch? Can I crouch? Can I assassinate this guy? Oh, uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> The combat is really good on this game. Oh no. These guys want it. Oh, this is a proper samurai. Oh, I could be in big trouble here. Leader killed. Interesting. Who wants it? No. Easy. So definitely impressed by this. I I know as well before, sometimes people have issues with frame generation and image quality. Sometimes there's ghosting or weird image effects. Not noticing any difference at all between this and NVIDIA frame generation. They're both really good in this game. I don't see any problems with either. I'm going to take a look with FSR upscaling on now as well. So you can see here we've got that set to quality and I've still got AMD frame generation on. It mostly seems to me that the FPS, at least so far from what I see here, is fairly similar between the two upscaling techniques. So between DLSS and FSR, difference in FPS with them both set at quality. In this game, at least, it seems fairly similar. The biggest difference seems with frame generation. Who are these guys? Up to no good. Oh, cool. Come at me, bro. Easy. So I'm just going to kind of ride, ride around a little bit. 
taking some of the, the map just to see if there's any noticeable difference in image quality. I keep popping off. I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring recently where going quicker is B, so I keep pressing that, but that's get off the horse in this game. So far for me seems fairly similar to be honest. Can't notice much difference between the LSS quality and FSR quality here. It looks pretty much the same. But everything seems fairly similar. Like GP, GP power is fairly pretty much the same. VRAM is pretty much the same with both. Whoa. Oh, it's a samurai. It's like a group leader, I think, that one. Huh. No, that's not fair. Two on one. And an archer. It's cool that he crouches. Here it is, leader. So there's three in this area, I think. There must be one more somewhere. Uh, but back to the, the image quality. Most, mostly from what I've tested in games, there really isn't too much difference between FSR and DLSS, especially a quality preset. I only really start to think you can notice when you, when you get to sort of balance them below, especially at stuff like performance. FSR performance can often look quite bad in games, but it really depends on a game-by-game -game basis. And also what the graphic settings are in the game. If you've enjoyed this video, click one of the videos on the screen now to see me testing more GPUs, and I'll catch you next time.